In this lesson, you're going to learn English with the news. We're going to read a news article together and you're going to learn a lot of advanced vocabulary, advanced grammar, and even correct pronunciation. Let's get started. Welcome to our article where we're talking about Ivanka Trump. Let me read the headline. Ivanka Trump throws brothers and father under bus in New York fraud suit. All right, so a fraud suit, suit, this is short form for a lawsuit. A lawsuit is when someone officially accuses you of something and then you must appear in court and defend yourself. Notice the pronunciation. I hear a lot of mistakes. Suit. Oot. Ignore this spelling here. Imagine it's more of a oo sound. Oot. 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 Lawsuit. Lawsuit. Fraud. Now, a fraud lawsuit. Fraud is the legal term of when you deceive someone. Deceive in the sense of lying to someone, usually in order to obtain money. Fraud, fraud suit, fraud lawsuit. So Ivanka Trump throws brothers and father under bus. What does that mean? <laughs> this is a really great idiom. Let me highlight the words of the idiom here. To throw someone under the bus, under the bus. Let me write this out for you here. To throw someone under the bus. This is, as I said, an idiom. Notice that I added the article the. This is not optional. You must use the article the. You might be saying, but Jennifer, they don't use the article the in the headline. That's because in headlines, they commonly leave out unnecessary words, filler words, but they're grammatically required. So articles are commonly omitted in headlines, but you need this article in the idiom. To throw someone under the bus, this is when you harm someone in order to protect yourself. Now, when I say harm, I don't mean physically harm someone. You could harm their reputation. You could harm their career. You could harm their relationship. So let's say I asked you to tell my boss that I was at a dentist appointment, but in reality, I was shopping. <laughs> I was doing something leisurely for myself. I was shopping, but then you throw me under the bus and you tell my boss that I'm shopping and not actually at the dentist. Now, maybe you protect yourself because you're not lying to your boss and your boss will see you as someone who is trustworthy. So that is good. But at the same time, you're harming me because you're voluntarily telling my boss that I'm shopping instead of at the dentist. So that would be you threw me under the bus because you throw someone under the bus. So Ivanka is throwing her family, her brothers and her father under the bus. So she's harming them in some way in order to protect herself. So let's find out how now that you understand the vocabulary. We'll continue on. Ivanka Trump, the eldest daughter of former President Donald Trump. Eldest, most students know what this means, but this means oldest, oldest, oldest daughter of former President Donald Trump has asked for a delay in bringing the 250 million fraud lawsuit. Notice here, they're saying lawsuit instead of just suit. They're exactly the same thing, but this man is also wearing a suit. The spelling and pronunciation is exactly the same. He is wearing a suit. Okay. So it's context that will help you identify if we're talking about clothing 
or about a formal legal process. The context will make it obvious. Fraud lawsuit filed against her, her brothers, her father, and their family's real estate company. Okay, we'll pause there for a second. So we talked about lawsuit, suit, that pronunciation, suit. We know what fraud is. A delay. A delay. This is when something is scheduled, but it takes longer than wanted or longer than the official scheduled time. I'm sure most students know this from the airport because you will hear the announcement, I'm sorry, but flight 234 destination Los Angeles is delayed. Your flight is delayed. So we commonly use this as an adjective with the verb to be is delayed. You can use this with a person. I was delayed in traffic. So if your boss asks you, where were you? Oh, sorry. I was delayed in traffic. So it took me longer than needed, wanted, required. In this case, a flight is something that runs on a schedule. Now, maybe you don't have an actual schedule for the amount of time you spend in traffic, but you do have an estimate. It should take me 15 minutes to get to work. Today, it took me 30 minutes. It took me longer than needed, wanted, necessary, so I was delayed. Notice my verb to be in the past simple. So she's asking for a delay. She's asking to receive additional time to complete something. And in this case, what she wants to complete is her, her legal argument, her legal case to protect herself from this fraud lawsuit. Before we go on, I want you to know you can get the free lesson PDF that summarizes everything you're learning in this lesson. So look in the description for the link to the free lesson PDF. Now let's continue on. So the delay about bringing this lawsuit to trial. Now, why does she want a delay? Because a defense arguing that she wasn't responsible for fraudulent financial statements issued by the company will take more time to prepare. So why do you want more time? Because it will take more time to prepare. It's a pretty simplistic reason for wanting a delay. We need more time, <laughs> but that is the reason why it will take more time. Let's talk about fraudulent because we talked about the word fraud, which is a noun fraudulent, fraudulent, fraudulent. This is an adjective. So it has the same meaning, but it's just describing something. So it's saying that the financial statements are fraudulent, which means they are not accurate. They are deceptive. There's something in them that isn't accurate. So maybe the company was claiming that this property is worth $1 million because we're talking about a real estate issue, right? So let's say I told you this house, this property is worth $1 million, but then it turns out that's fraudulent when in reality it was only worth $750,000. So I received more money. That would be fraudulent. That would be me committing fraud. You could file a fraud lawsuit against me. Okay, let's continue on. In court documents, Ms. Trump's attorneys argue that the fraud complaint filed last year against her and her co-defendants by New York Attorney General Letitia James does not contain a single allegation that Ms. Trump directly or indirectly created, prepared, reviewed, or certified any of her father's financial statements. Okay, so we already know about the fraud, 
The complaint, this is just another way of saying lawsuit is more of a legal term. So you don't really need this for your everyday vocabulary unless you're a lawyer. We use the word complaint in an everyday context though, and it's very common. Do you have any complaints? Do you have any complaints? And this is when you are not satisfied with a service or a product or something, and you can raise your dissatisfaction. I wrote the definition here. And in fact, many departments, many large organizations will have a complaint department, an area of the company that their only job is to deal with customer complaints. So you could email in your complaint, call in, text in, other ways you can raise a complaint. In this case, it means lawsuit. The fraud lawsuit filed last year against her and her co-defendants, okay, does not contain a single allegation. Allegation is also a legal term. We do see this a lot in the media. Allegation, this is a statement and it's made, but without proof. So there's no proof at all that someone has done something wrong or illegal. So for example, there were allegations. So there were statements that the CEO committed fraud. So maybe I just wrote a letter to, wrote a letter, <laughs> who writes letters anymore? Maybe I sent an email <laughs> to a journalist and said that the CEO committed fraud. Right there, I just made an allegation against the CEO because I gave a statement, but there was no proof. I just said it, right? But they're saying that this, this lawsuit, the complaint does not contain any allegations, a single, this is one, right? So this is a way of emphasizing zero, zero. So a single, this means one, but if you say it does not contain a single, it's just emphasizing that there are zero allegation. So there are no statements that Ivanka Trump, Mrs. Trump did anything wrong. Basically let's continue on the judge overseeing the fraud lawsuit. When you oversee something, you are responsible for that something. So it's another way of saying responsible for, because you're responsible for something. Now it can also mean in charge of, which is exactly the same thing. It's just another common way of saying it. Let me write an example down here. I could ask who's overseeing the conference. So who's in charge of the conference? Who's responsible for the conference? Or she oversaw the interview process. So there was an interview process. Your company hired someone. Notice this is in the past simple. She oversaw the interview process. My verb is see, and then I just add over oversaw. She oversaw the interview process. She was responsible for, she was in charge of. So now you have three synonyms, but notice the different grammatical structures responsible for in charge of, and then simply oversee something. The judge overseeing the fraud lawsuit has said the two October trial this might be a British way of writing dates, or perhaps it's a legal way of writing dates because commonly in American English, when we write dates, we write the month and then we write the day and then you could write the year if you have it. So I would say the October 2nd 
trial, the October 2nd trial, the trial on October 2nd said the October 2nd trial. To me, it sounds weird to say the two October. I don't know. Perhaps it's a legal term. The October 2nd trial (laughs) will commence. This is a formal way of saying start. I don't encourage you to say the movie will commence at eight o'clock because it sounds too formal. You can use commence in a legal setting or a very academic setting, but in an everyday speech, including in professional situations like a job interview, a meeting, a conference, use start, don't use commence. We'll start on time. Oh, we'll start on time. (laughs) I was expecting them to say a specific date, but on time. So if something starts on time, it wasn't delayed, right? So it will start on time, come hell or high water. This is an idiom. It's a informal idiom. I'm surprised that the judge said this, to be honest, because it's more of an informal idiom. It's not slang by any mean, but it's just informal, informal. And it means despite circumstances. So the judge is saying that I don't care if Ivanka needs more time. That's a circumstance. The trial will start on time. So you can just add come hell or high water to say, despite any circumstances, you might say, (laughs) I'm going to get that promotion come hell or high water, which means you're going to do everything in your power. It sounds very strong or I'm going to become a confident speaker come hell or high water. So even if there are circumstances, like it's very difficult, it takes time, it costs money because you have to invest, invest in training. You're still going to do it come hell or high water. All right, let's continue on. But Ms. Trump's request for delay cites the unique circumstances of her role in the case and notes that she has not been accused of lying about her father's finances. So we know that she has not been accused because there was not a single allegation. If there was an allegation, it means that someone accused her. So we actually already know this has not been accused of lying about her father's finances, despite her former role as a top executive at the Trump organization. All right, let's continue on. Her lawyers also said the case is not simple because she resigned from her role When you resign from your role, this is a formal way of saying quit. And when you resign, when you quit, it means the exact same thing. And it's when you voluntarily leave your position, but it's also permanent. So you're not just leaving for two weeks, two months, which would be temporary, you're leaving permanently. So when you voluntarily leave your position, and I'm going to add permanently, permanently. So she resigned from her role at the company in 2017, which means in 2017, she stopped working for the company. And why did she resign? Well, because she wanted to take a position in her father's administration when he was president. Okay, let's continue on. Ms. Trump's father, Donald Trump, obviously, has also asked for a delay. So Donald Trump also wants more time. Surprise, surprise. In the trial and argue that a later start date is born of necessity. This is just a way of saying necessary, necessary. It's more of an idiom to say necessary. It's not that common. I would probably just say a later start date is necessary in part due to the staggering volume against the company. I really like this adjective here, 
Staggering means shocking and surprising. And this is an adjective. So let me share an example most people can relate to because of the staggering price of gas, staggering price of gas, many people are traveling less. Staggering price of gas. So that is our adjective. It describes the price of gas. We commonly use this in a verb to be statement. So you could just say as a statement, the price of gas is staggering, is staggering, staggering. So our verb to be, and then our adjective staggering. Now you could put this in the past simple and say was staggering last year, for example. So remember to conjugate your verb to be. So that's a nice advanced adjective to add to your vocabulary. Let's continue on. Defendants have had ample time and opportunity. I really like this adjective ample. Ample means more than enough, more than enough. I want to compare this to an adjective you're probably familiar with, which is sufficient. Sufficient simply means enough. So if I say you've had sufficient time to complete the assignment, that simply means enough. But if I say you've had ample time, it means you've had more than enough time. So if you ask your boss for a delay, <laughs> an extension, which it's commonly called in the workplace, an extension in this context, it's a delay. Your boss could say, you've had ample time, more than enough time. So there's probably some annoyance in that if you're asking for an extension, a delay, and you've had ample time. Ample time and opportunity to familiarize themselves with the matter. Familiarize yourself with something is just when you become familiar with it. So you understand it at a deeper level. Instead, they've waited until the eve of the fact discovery deadline to only just begin their process of conducting discovery. Discovery is a legal term. It describes when you gather all your documents, you interview people, you request information, all of that is done during discovery. So don't worry about this. It's a legal term term. I learned this from watching legal shows like Suits, for example. Instead, they waited until the eve of the discovery deadline. The eve of, this is the night before. The night before. Let me give you a example. Many brides are nervous the eve of their weddings. And this is the night before their wedding. Okay, so we use this eve of, we really reserve it for more very special dates or very important dates. So a discovery deadline, we could consider this a very important date, a wedding, an anniversary, a holiday. We could consider that a special date. And then it's more common to use the eve of in everyday context, it would be more common to use the night before. For example, Call me the night before you go on vacation. Now, I could say call me the eve of your vacation, but my friend would probably be a little confused. <laughs> Why are you talking like that, Jennifer? <laughs> because it's just a more regular event. Assuming this is a regular vacation, perhaps if it's a once in a lifetime or it's your honeymoon, but we have a specific term for the vacation you take after you get married, we call that your honeymoon. So maybe in those specific cases, I would say the eve of, but it sounds more natural in an everyday context to say the night before. The eve of the fact discovery deadline 
to only just begin their process of conducting discovery to prepare for trial. All right. And now seek more time. Seek, this is a verb. This is a more formal verb. And when you seek something, you try to get it. You try to get it. So I'm seeking a job. I'm trying to get a job. They're seeking more time. They're trying to get more time and now seek more time. So it's more of a formal verb. The attorney general's office said, and that is the end of our article. A lot of really advanced vocabulary. I would say don't worry too much about the legal vocabulary unless you're a lawyer. And instead, just focus on the everyday vocabulary that I taught you in the lesson. So now what I'll do is I'll read the article from start to finish and you can focus on my pronunciation. Ivanka Trump throws brother and father under bus in New York fraud suit. Ivanka Trump, the eldest daughter of former President Donald Trump, has asked for a delay in bringing the $250 million fraud lawsuit filed against her, her brothers, her father, and their family's real estate company to trial because a defense arguing that she wasn't responsible for fraudulent financial statements issued by the company will take more time to prepare. In court documents, Ms. Trump's attorneys argue that the fraud complaint filed last year against her and her co-defendants by New York Attorney General Letitia James does not contain a single allegation that Ms. Trump directly or indirectly created, prepared, reviewed, or certified any of her father's financial statements. The judge overseeing the fraud lawsuit has said the two October trial will commence on time come hell or high water. But Ms. Trump's request for delay cites the unique circumstances of her role in the case and notes that she has not been accused of lying about her father's finances, despite her former role as a top executive at the Trump organization. Her lawyers also said the case is not simple because she resigned from her role at the company in 2017 to take a position in her father's administration. Ms. Trump's father has also asked for a delay in the trial and argued that a later start date is born of necessity, in part due to the staggering volume against the company. Defendants have had ample time and opportunity to familiarize themselves with the matter. Instead, they have waited until the eve of the fact discovery deadline to only just begin the process of conducting discovery to prepare for trial and now seek more time, the attorney general's office said. Now you can keep improving your vocabulary and grammar with this lesson here, and you can get your free speaking guide to learn how to speak English fluently and confidently in six easy steps, and you can get that from my website here. So get started with your next lesson now.